Hello again, hello YouTubers. Um, I'm back again with the third part of my uh, my first DIY synth project. Uh, I just wanted to give you all a overview of the filters. Now, both of these are, as I've mentioned before, our Steiner Parker uh, clone state variable filters, where we have high pass, band pass, uh, high pass, pan pass, low pass input on both. Um, both are diode ladder filters one having eight diodes and the next one having ten diodes each of these also have their own independent LFOs which come from these op amp um, ICs over here and I'll quickly run you through the controls both of these outside ones are the um, these are the rate the LFO rates and we have a resonance controls and then we have the filter cutoff controls. Also on filter two, we have an input gain from filter one's output amount. So you can really get this to clip and distort. Quite not too bad, but it does clip a bit in a nice way, a nice warm way, and really sort of punches that tone through. Um, I've decided to go for slightly different um, experiments on these two this first one here is kind of uh, a more of a faithful recreation to the schematic i was following however the schematic um is one i got from i think it's usymph or what is it usymph usymph.net or com anyway it doesn't matter too much i think i'm sure a lot of people who are watching this know what i'm kind of talking about however the resonance um the resonance part of the circuit i took from the Arturia Mini Brute as the one I did experiment when I tried to copy the whole schematic it, I couldn't get it to work so I managed to be successful so I've built both on that um, on that scheme anyway uh, also we have on each one we have two trimmers here which actually control the amount of resonance you get overall resonance you get so you can have it really screaming and really sort of grungy and sort of really big fat overtones on your sound or you can have it quite creamy and um, frothy and I don't know you know when you get that kind of top end sheen on a filter sweep you can have it behaving like that so yeah and um, also here we have two on off switches for each filter and yeah and that's pretty much it to be honest with you but what i also did notice was when i was kind of experimenting i was tr i was tr trying different types of capacitors and i think a lot of this filter's tone actually owes to the uh type of capacitors you use and also probably the the amount of um the exponential curve of the transistors that you use as well so I've actually used slightly different capacitors in the diode ladder here. So one filter is quite ballsy in the bottom end and quite angry. This one I would say is a bit more polite, but it's got a really, really nice sharp, gives you a nice sharp zappy sound where you can actually make really good, nice sound effects by getting it to self oscillate without actually running any input signal. And it's really crazy when you run the LFO on that as well. And start to uh, tweak with a cutoff. So I'm going to show you all that in the uh, the next video. So again, but we also have you know here is where we have the CV input, so we can input pretty much any kind of control voltage. Over here, I have my ADSR, which I have, um, which is negative and positive polarity. But that's going to be for another video. So my next video, I will, I will run you through the sounds run you through sounds and sort of different um, setups on that i also I, another future plan would probably be to make this um a parallel or series switchable um, circuit and also to even possibly have it so you can actually bypass the diet the, the capacitors and actually throw them over to another free different types of capacitors so you get two tonal characters in the flick of one switch which is again not a conventional um not a conventional thing to have on a, a synth filter 
before I disappear, one thing or other thing I forgot to mention was this LFO has two different shapes, wave shapes on it. Well, I say two different wave shapes. Basically, we have a blending potentiometer. So we have an output from a square and an output from a triangle. Uh, one is five o'clock and one is at seven o'clock. I'm not sure which one. I think it's the square is at the five o'clock hard position to the right. And the other one is seven o'clock to the left, a triangle. And you can actually also take that modulation in between. So if you actually put the potential in between rather than being hard fixed to a single waveform, we can actually blend in between. So, yeah, um, it does give some quite interesting modulations because it also it almost kind of creates a sawtooth of the actual hard hard edges of those wave both those waveforms together the square and the triangle and I think I think I've covered everything to be honest with you so yeah next video we'll be going through um some sounds all right uh speak soon people